And what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to create topographies and how to create sheets and also how to play around with our wall types continuing from out of last week. Or two weeks ago, excuse me. All right, so what we're going to start with is this is what it's going to show up um, when you first open it up. There's nothing here. These are going to be your little viewports. Uh, and then right now, what you're going to do is it should, yours should already be up on level one. I want you guys to go down under floor plans and click on site. Okay, so this is going to show from the top view of whatever structure you have created. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to go up to the top, we're going to click on massing and site, and then we're going to create a uh, topography, so it's going to be topo surface. And it's going to give you these options to place points, uh, simplify, uh, simplify the surface. Also, you can import it from other places if you have um, the documents for that. Um, right now, we're just going to place points. And there's going to be an elevation here. Right now, we're just going to uh, set it to zero. Okay. And I want you to click uh, place it in two spots. And there's just going to be two little black dots. And what we're going to do next is we're going to change the elevation, and let's say about 10 feet, and create two more to make a box. And it's going to give you all these little lines. These lines, these are, are going to be our uh, elevation lines. Um, so each line is about two feet. One, one two, three, four. Oh, no, you know, it's actually one foot on this one. Um, is there an easy way to tell? Easy way to tell? Besides counting every single little... Uh, you can change it. Where did you change it? I don't remember where you changed it. Mm. It always defaults to a uh, toe foot. To a foot? Yeah, unless you're getting yeah. into a much bigger scale, I think there's a threshold mm -hmm. to where it starts switching up your uh, your distances just to make sure that you don't have a thousand mm -hmm. lines on your screen. Right. Is there a way you can control that? I, believe you can, but I, I don't think you'll ever need to, unless you're going into a thousand foot, like, topo surface, which in that case, I would just, re uh, I would recommend not, not messing with those settings, because then you get, you get separation and distances, and mostly when you make it as uh, a ground plane for your site, mm -hmm. it messes with the distances there as well, so you don't want to have your site at a two foot difference and then you're building at a one foot difference and every time you change the site it changes your distances on your building so I was, i've never messed with it i don't think i've ever had to and even when i get to hundreds yeah you know, like thousand square feet of topo surface i don't think i've ever messed with it just because you don't really need to it'll do it for you it'll 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 mess around but you're you're welcome to Come back and tell me because I, I never mess with it. All right. Um, so next thing we're going to do is now we're going to change it to somewhere in between that one to ten feet. So you can select any number that you want. I'm going to go with seven, and I'm going to put it somewhere in between our little box that we made. And it's going to change those lines automatically to fit what Close it to. thinks that it would be for your topo surface. And if you want to ever modify it, you can always pick, grab the point and kind of move it around and it's going to automatically edit it to evenly distribute that um, elevation lines, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Just yeah. And so in a 3D view, this is what it's going to look like. So you can kind of see the, the elevation and the change in here. It's very small, but... How do you pan around? Um, it's going to be shift and the middle button on your mouse there. And then just the pan is just going to be your middle button only. Nice. Okay. Can you control the points from a 3D view too? Yes. So like here, so I, get, I just clicked on this little point here. Now let's say I want to change it to 15 feet. Mm -hmm. And I can rotate it, and I can edit it. So it even gives you markers for every 10 feet. Okay. 
That's why I, I say don't mess with this, because mm -hmm. those are very set parameters. It just helps, and it's very defined. Very simple, very very uh, efficient way of making topography, and mostly because um, something that'll be taught, I, I believe, in the advanced uh, Revit, it's how to import images. So if you have like a PDF or a DWG that you know is a drawing and just has all your topographies, you could just trace it out as well. So it'll be like a picture frame on Rhino. It, it's it's simple. Oh yeah. If you know uh, well, I'll show it later. I have yeah. I have yeah, an example of that where I uploaded a picture and then created my own topography from that uh, image, and I can show you guys that later. Um, we have time. All right, so I want you guys to go back to your site, and so we're still in edit mode right now. That's why we see those little X, uh, the little check mark and the X. Also, if we try to go to any other thing, everything is going to be kind of blocked out there. So we want to make sure to click the little green air, uh, check mark, and that's going to finish our editing. But what we need to do now is now we want to put a building on there, and you can't just, unfortunately, you can't just put a building just directly on it and expect it to fit. What you have to do is you have to go to Massey and Insight, and you want to click on Building Pad. So this is what we're going to put underneath our, this is kind of like our foundation. So right now you can pretend that there's a team of engineers that are waiting there to excavate the site, to make it flat. You know, you'll never have a building that's sideways. So. All right, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna, I'm gonna click on the rectangle. There's all these other shapes and uh, line forms that you can create for your building. If you have a different and irregular shaped building. I'm gonna keep it at zero feet as my elevation or my offset, excuse me. And let's create a rectangle. And make sure to press the little green check mark again to get out of edit mode. And if we go into our 3D view, we're gonna see that it cut through our site right down to our zero foot mark. And it created a foundation as well. It has a yeah, this little part right down here, this is going to be our foundation. It says pad. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you go on 2D? 2D, 2D is views. going to be these ones right down here. These are going to be all our 2D views. There's also the 3D if you want to open up 3D from this panel, or you can just go up to the top and just click on the 3D little house. You look like... Okay, so just, you're good? All right, no. Okay, so these are your views. Think of these as um, as a, a shortcut to a Make 2D. If you're familiar with Rhino, Make 2D is making things flat and making them line work. So these will be your different types of views. So you have level one, which is a view from top down of line work on level one, whatever you decide level one is at, that'll be your level one. You have sight, so the entire site, you're looking at it from top down on line work, you'll always see it from top down. You have your elevations. You'll, you don't have to like go on like right side view, or you, know, you have all your elevations here. And these will always lead you to 2D drawings, unless you go on to uh, 3D view which leads you to this. But you also have a little house, a little 3D house at the top that would lead you to 3D view either way. So, like, go on site, if you just click on site, you see it from top down, and it becomes a line drawing. All right, and I also want to let you guys, uh, show you guys, so why we are on site is because if we go to level one, nothing's gonna show up. If we go on to level two, nothing's gonna show up either. And that's because um, when we're on our floor plans, our topography is not a floor. It's just going to be the ground. Is there any way to show it, like in the background? You can. Um, you can go to level one, mm -hmm. and then you can go to underlay right here. And you click on, uh, actually, it doesn't let you. Mm, okay, never mind. No, not on there. But. What you can do 
is when we're on our view here, um, we can go to our top view. And it's going to show this, but when we put on a building, you can click on our section box, and that way you can lower it down to wherever level you want it to. And it's going to cut through it, and then we can go back up to our top view, and it'll show you that section with the site in it. Where did you get the section box? Section box, if you click off of anything, and you're not highlighting anything, We're in the and it says 3D view, you're going to scroll down, and there's going to be this right under extent and it's going to be section box. So just click that box, press apply, and then this little outline of a box is going to show up, this guy here. Okay. okay. Yeah, it even has a push mm hmm Yep, it'll give you the push And if that's not the pattern that you want for your push you can always change the pattern on the visibility graphics. Right here, visibility graphics edit. All right, so I'm going to turn off our section box, and we're going to go back to our site. So now what we want to do is we want to create a little house. You want to do this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if you guys remember from two weeks ago, we go under architecture and then to wall. And right now I'm on create line. And I actually want to go on to pick line, so I can just pick the line, and it's going to create it. But right now I'm also on wall center line, and we're going to go finish face to interior. All right, so that way when we create it, the wall is going to go, if you see that little dotted line right there? Yeah. You see the dotted line? That's going to be where the other side of the wall is going to be, okay? I'm going to click it. And then if we go into a 3D view, this is what it's going to look like. Because now we have our building, and it, you can see it cutting through our site. And now the wall is not interfered with the site. Also, if you don't put on a building pad, I want to show you what happens. So let's grab our building pad. Oops. Cancel. Why am I um, still on that mode? All right, if we have our building pad, I'm going to delete it. This is what happens if we don't put it in there. And I have some extra walls, excuse me. It is now yeah, topography. our topography is going through our site. How can you move around the building pad? Move it's around. Like it's, if it's too far to the left on your topography and you want to move the building pad over. So you're just going back into your edit mode. So I'll mm -hmm. bring it back. So I have the building pad back in there. Mm -hmm. So let me go on it. There it is, building pad. Mm -hmm. You want to go edit boundary. You want to look it up from top down. Yeah. And it's best to always look from the top. And we can just highlight it all mm -hmm. and move it around. Okay. And then just put the green arrow wherever you want it or have a bit to edit it, finish editing, okay? Yeah. Or if that's not what you want, hit the little X, say cancel. Those, those walls are part of the foundation or they're part of the first level? No, they become level. their own separate walls. First level? Level mm -hmm. one? Yeah. Right. So they're part of the first level now, so what we're going to do is so we look at level one. Now um, only those walls are going to show up, not the topography. Um, I think it's also on level two. Yeah, because they're huge. Yeah, so default for the walls is going to make it 20 feet tall. 20 feet, that's about two floors, so it's going to show up on level one and level two, okay? All right, next thing we want to do is we want to add in, go to level one, and we're going to add in some doors and windows. It's going to ask you to save the project right now. We don't really need to save it. That's one of the good things about Revit is that it already, already knows you're not going to save and that some, at some point your computer is going to crash and you will lose all that work. So every, I don't know, what is it, every like 20 or so minutes, it'll give you a prompt that says, do you want to save? Just keeps on reminding you. It yeah. keeps you from crashing your computer and losing all your process. Kind of nice. 
Also, um, it also auto I want to show you, it also automatically saves onto your computer as well. So as you see, I have two projects here. I have Project 2 Site and Project 2 Site, uh, site 2. Project 2 Site 2. Um, and you can see it has this .00002 and .00001. These are automatic saves from Revit onto my computer. Backup drives. Yeah. Backup folders. In case you end up losing it or something happens to it, you accidentally delete it, you have these backup ones so you're not completely lost. All right. So now we're going to add in a door. And... We're going to go back up to architecture, select some windows. Make it pretty. Yeah. Make it very pretty. And add in a couple of windows here. Remember to make sure that your windows are on the same, on the exterior side of the wall. Um, if they are not, let's see if we have any that are not. No, they're all good. But if they are not, you can select the windows and just press spacebar to change the orientation. Okay. So now if we go into our 3D view, we're going to see them, but we're going to end up with a problem. So our problem is they are uh, conflicting with our, um, our topography. So what we want to do in that case is we want to select our wall, and we can actually raise it up. And you can do that with, where if you click on it, you can see when you use your arrows, you can also see where this changes for your sill height if you want it more exact. Um, it's gonna, depending on how zoomed in or zoomed out you are, it's gonna change it on different increments accordingly to your view window. So right now it's still a little bit underneath. I wanna raise it up just a tad. Same with our windows. Actually, we generally want these ones to match, oops, excuse me, want to match our top of our door height. Also, if you want a quicker way to do this, one option to do is to click on one of our little components there, and we're going to press this Align tool. And you're going to first click on where you want it aligned to. So I'm clicking this sill. And then I'm going to be clicking. Uh, it's not going to I don't think it works in 3D. No, it works in 3D and just not on the right. You always want to make sure you're on the right line there. Hold a second. Let me make this a little easier. Let's draw. Oops. Can I not draw a line? If you can get if you can get it the very top line, and it works really well. It's not wanting to be my friend right now. There you go. Top. There you go. So as you saw, I clicked on the very top of the sill of that this window, and I wanted it to match. I wanted this window that was lower to match it, so I clicked on the top of there as well, and it's giving me this dotted line to show me that it's aligned, and I can either lock it or not lock it. A good thing with locking, if you lock items that are supposed to be on the same level, is that once I get off it, I'm on... I'm back on my modify. It's if I move this window, it's going to move the other window with it. Okay. All right, and let's do the same with this one. And also, if you can't quite click on it, press the tab key and it's going to change which line it's actually picking. So I was able to pick the top one on that one. And now I'm going to pick the top line on this window, and I'm going to lock it. Okay. Just a simple. Uh, just get rid of the, the last window, and I want to make like a balcony, like on the top. This one. Yeah. 
Okay, something that uh, I've been having a lot of questions with is um, how to make a wall, not just a square. Because walls will always de default to a rectangle shape. So something that you can do very easily is... Uh, okay, so what you do is you click on these walls, and it'll give you this option right here. It's called Edit Wall Profile. What you're basically doing is you're going to set this to a two line, a two D line drawing. So this this wall that is thick becomes flat and it becomes lines. So it becomes a rectangle made of lines. What I recommend is always if you're going to edit a wall, always do it in elevation because you get more precise uh, distances. So what elevation is that? That's there you go. Yeah, it's a north elevation. So right now we're on the north elevation. We're looking at it from the north side, looking flat at it. So I'm going to click on this wall. Yep. Right now I'm going to do edit wall profile and it turns white with these purple lines. So these purple lines outline that wall. So what you can do is right here here, right here, and you do, should I just, okay, huh? yeah, sure, this one, mm -hmm. and so what he's doing right now is he clicked on our, under our modify, he yeah. went under to our um, trim tool, right here, and he clicked on the two lines that he wants to keep, and it trimmed it, so now we're missing that little corner in the top, um, and it's connected to the new corner that we made. So basically now, if you hit the little green check mark, and you go on 3D, you have a wall that's been edited. So now it's no longer defaulted as a rectangle, now you can make your own shaped walls. You can make them rounded, you can give yourself the space to, um, to make, you know, to create different uh, wall types. And something that you can do is that at level two, One, two. yeah, you see that it even edited on the floor plan. So now I'm gonna make a um, a floor. And you get a floor plan. Oh, right. Okay, level two. What? Okay. And That's right here. yeah. So I'm just gonna make a floor from here real simple floor but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a little, a little spicy right now I'm gonna make a extended floor right yeah not so basically I just made a floor just out of line work. You can make it just a basic rectangle if you want. I like to draw my, my things out. Um, oh, shit. Um, I didn't finish that one. No. So if we, right now, what he did was he created a line, but he didn't quite go all the way. And then with he has this extra line in there. So if we click OK, it's going to give us a, oh, it didn't give us a warning. Sometimes they'll give us a warning and say, oh, your lines aren't connected, or uh, you have lines that are overlapping, or something is going wrong with it. And it's going to, what it's going to do, so I'm going to demonstrate that. So say right here, it's not connected. If we press OK, it's going to highlight it in orange, and it's going to tell us down here what is wrong. Uh, lines must be in closed loop. And you can either quit sketching or you can continue sketching. Uh, if we quit sketching, that's just kind of saying, like, we don't want to do it anymore. We cancel, change our mind. So we're going to say continue. And so now we're going to use our trim tool and we're going to click on the two lines that we want to keep. And it's going to extend that. 
Now we can press OK and we have our floor. Yeah. And if you go on 3D view, you made a little balcony. You know, you have your own little um, balcony on the right here. Yeah. All right. So as you see, our wall it's not quite in the right place where we cut our wall. So what we're going to do is we can either edit our wall or we can edit our floor height. Um, looking at if I click on this wall, you can kind of see where those windows are and. Um, see where the wall and or the floor and the window intersect so it's probably better for us to actually edit our wall profile and so let's lower this down and we can see where the height is so it looks like it's right there okay press okay and now there it is a little bit so um, back to what I was saying in the in the first uh, lecture is that um, this this program is extremely efficient at creating simple shapes, very simple things, very fast. You can get extremely detailed if you want, but when it comes to these kind of massing models, uh, like a real quick sketching model, we made a building with a balcony, with windows, with topography in thirty five minutes. You know, um, a little less. Yeah. And also something that I, uh, just in case you have questions about like uh, edit tools and stuff, if you just hover over them, it'll tell you what it is, and then it'll give you a little prompt of what they are. So if you go, I don't know, walls, you just leave it on there, it'll tell you what they are. Uh, on some modified tools, uh, if you just leave it over it, like over it. It even has a little video of what it does. It, it's extremely rudimentary to the point where it'll tell you what it does, essentially. You can get a lot more detail with it, but again, efficiency, that's the one thing that I, I can say about Revit, it's extremely efficient at making things, so. Okay. Um, let's see, what else, what else was there? Let's make the sheet. Oh. Let's make a site sheet. So to finish off our building, let's quickly make a roof um, just to kind of finish it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to um, our, let's go floor level two, and we want to make a roof. Okay, so we're going to go under architecture, roof, and it's going to give us our generic roof. Um, let's go, instead, let's change it to wood rack. Raptor asphalt shingle. Okay. And what I'm what I'm on right now is I'm on my pick lines or pick walls tool. So it's whatever wall you, you choose, that's what it's gonna automatically connect to. Okay. Also, we want an overhang. Let's put an overhang of about one foot. So you just type in one, enter, and it's automatically gonna put it to one foot. Um, if you want inches, put zero hyphen one and enter, or zero hyphen, whatever you want. Um, so I'm gonna click it, and it's gonna give you that dotted line that's gonna tell you where it's gonna build it. And click, click, click. And the, remember these little triangles mean that wall, or that side is gonna be sloped. And right now, I don't want this wall here, or this wall to be sloped. So I'm gonna click on it, and I'm going to uncheck this defined slope. It's going to get rid of that little triangle. So I only have two sides that are sloped. Or was it the other way that I wanted it? Oh, I think it was the other way I wanted it. Never mind. Switch the walls. And to that point, that, that automatic, like, I don't want that, I'm going to switch it. You don't have to redo the entire thing. You don't have to change the layers. You don't have to make a brand new roof. You just change it like instantly. And once you make it, and you decide you don't like the way it looks, just go back to editing it, and you can change it instantly. You don't have to remake the entire thing with messing with a uh, little nitty gritty shit. All right. And so we're gonna press OK, and it says, "Do you want your walls to um, go up to the roof?" So we're gonna say yes because we want them to be attached. All 
All right, and as you can see, there looks like there's going to be a little bit problem. So we're going to go into 3D view and see what's the issue. So it's a little bit too low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oops, it's not that one, that's our slope. And I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to raise it up a little. Just, change the base offset. So let's go about, what, five feet? There we go. That looks better. Because it automatically cut all our walls, so it's trying to cut through our windows as well. Fortunately, we don't want our windows to be cut through. And it looks a little bit low on this side, so I'm going to click it and raise it up another three feet. So let's go eight feet offset, okay? There we go. So we have our little balcony there. We have our windows, our door, our window, and our roof. Upstairs. Hmm? Yeah, time. All right, and then one last thing before we start on our sheets is I want to bring you back to level floor plan level one, and we're going to make a staircase. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our stairs, and this is where we can create our stairs. So we can create a regular uh, straight stairs, uh, rounded, uh, partial, an L-shaped, however we want, or we can even create it to be our own unique shape using our run landing, like our little draw tool and the run landings and supports. Okay. So I'm just going to click and it's going to give you already a set amount of steps uh, that are our very standard height and depth of our staircase and it's going to tell us that we can only create 18 and if we don't want to create all of that we can not select all of those and then create a landing and change the direction of which it goes. So I'm going to do this, 18. There's a load. Give it a second, my computer's just slow. All right. And if we go into our 3D view, we're not gonna, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish it. Make sure to click on your little green check mark. Now bring it back, bring that back. And so I'm gonna go to my section box to check look on the inside of my house and we see it there but there's one problem is our floor is in the way so what we're going to do is we're going to say edit boundary and we're going to go up to our level two because that's where our floor is and already it has an underlay of our floor <coughs> level one and if you don't know yet, I'll show you in just one second but we're going to put our little box tool zoom in on our stairs and from the top, we're going to go about halfway down the stairs and create a box around there. And click on our little green here for a check mark. All right, and then the underlay is when we click off of everything. You can see it here. So if I don't want to see the stairs or anything underneath, I just click none, and it'll go away. And just, actually, it's going to be still be there because this is actually going up to level two. Um, but this other part back here, if you see when I highlight it, um, this latter part is going to go away if I open it up, okay? So let's go to our 3D view, and we can see the inside of our building. There's a nice little opening that allows for our staircase to go through. And the staircase automatically comes with uh, railings and, like, I guess a code. Approved stair sizes, so you have to. You can get super detailed with the stairs. You can make your own type, type of, uh, but that's for. And you can always yeah. edit the type too. If you just click on this little edit button right at the top. All right. So I'm going to turn off my section box. Apply. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create a sheet. So this is what you'd use if you want to print it out on our. Uh, what, 24 by 36 or whatever size you want to do, 11 by 17, you can always change the size. So we're going to click on our sheet, so don't cl double click, just click once. And we're going to right click and we're going to say new sheet. Alright, and so what it's going to do, it's, this is the sheet that it's already going to give you. Um, sometimes if it's not in there, you have to just press load and find it in your families. It does give you um, a certain amount of sheets already in 
under your family's component, if you remember from two weeks ago. And I'm going to press OK. And this is when it's going to come up too. So it's going to give you a, this little title block on the side where you can put your name, you can put the project information, the date, what page it is. This is the 8101, so this is page one. Um, it has Autodesk right now on it. If you don't like that, you can click on this and you can go edit family. And actually you can do this for any component too, is edit family. And it's gonna open up basically a new project. And you can edit it now. So I'm gonna delete all this stuff. So I just want a sheet with a border. All right, so you got a sheet with a border. And now, like I said, it opened up a new project technically, so what we're going to do is we're going to load this into our uh, original project. So I have another site project up here, so we want to make sure to click on the correct project that we're working, what we want to load it into, okay? And it says, over, do you want to override the existing one? I want to say yes, because I don't want to use that one. And now I got rid of that little title block. Yeah. And when we want to add in different plans, what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this, whatever view you want, click on it once, and you're going to drag it onto your sheet. And it's going to give you this little blue box of where you want to put it. Select, and then there's your view. All right, so this is actually looking a little small. Our viewports also look a little bit large. So I'm going to go into level one, Zoom out, and I'm going to move our little viewports. Make it a little smaller window. So what the viewports are is just your elevations. So your north, south, east, and west, that's where you control it, where your elevations lie and where you can see it from. All right, and one other thing I'm going to do, why is this? So what we want to do is also when we look, went to our sheets, so if we click on sheets, it's going to show us our sheet one. It also looks a little bit small as a view. So if we go back to floor plan one, we can change what scale we want it at. So it was a little small, so I want it at a one quarter. And it's automatically going to change everything. And now when we go here, our view is a lot bigger. Okay. And if we want to move these little, these are the little title bars. Let me go back into full view. We can just, if you don't click on there and you hover over it, you can move it around. But when you click on our little window, now you can edit our text too. So we want to say, um, floor plan, oops, plan one. Click off. And you want to rename your corresponding views, you can yes or no, it's up to you. I'm going to say yes, so it also changed it over here. It changed my name to the name of level one to floor plan one. Yeah. You don't have to if you don't want to. But there it is, it shows it for you. Also, if you want to show like this site, same thing. It's a little small for the view right now, but it shows what our site looks like right now. Can you edit within that box? You can. So what you do is if you double click, it's going to gray out everything here. Mm -hmm. And it's going to only make this in black. Okay. Double clicking it is just activating that viewport. So when you, what a sheet essentially is, is make 2D. It's taking that line work and just transferring it over to something that's printable. But they're still active viewports, so you can double click on them and activate them and edit from there. Or you can actually make lines that are not in the project, so you can have detail lines like, uh, I don't know, like trace lines, you can have, uh, I don't know, detail lines if you want to start drawing your own things, if you want to add little details that you rather not model. You can just draw them with detail lines. It's a lot more simple that way. All right. Also, so I activated my view. This is black. Everything else is gray right now. Um, I don't want these.
these viewports in my sheet right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of them and I'm going to hide in view. And it'll give you a uh, an option for elements and category. Element is just the single item. Category is the entire thing that's related to those. So I'm going to go categories and it's going to hide all of those. If we want to show those again, we're just going to go down here to the little uh, light bulb and it's going to bring everything in this pink color of everything that's hidden and if you want to reveal it, you just click on it, right click again and you say unhide in view. Okay. All right, so that's how you create your sheets. Also, you can go to annotate and you can add in text, you can add in lines, you can decorate it with little clouds, however you want. Okay. And then when you want to print, control P, it's going to bring it up just like a normal print. Change your page, what printer you want, blah, blah, blah. All right, and that's it. This one. All right, so that's it for this one. I just want to show you guys before we finish up here um, what I was talking about for some of my other uh, projects that I've done before. Or not done before, excuse me, but um, it's this one here. So, like I was saying before, so let me open up. So this is going to be my site. So I was, we were talking about putting in a picture and working off of that picture. So this is what I did with that picture. I actually hit it. Let me unhide it. So we want to unhide. Get out of our view. So this is the picture that I was working from. It's very thick line, but it worked um, for what I was working for. Um, anyway, so I went from this, minimize that, fix it here, and I created, from there I created my topography with all existing conditions on it as well. The only thing it's missing is my trees and plants. How would you export the drawing to Illustrator? Export it to Illustrator. Um, isn't that just saving the project? Yeah. That's just saving the project as certain file types. So you mm -hmm. can either save as, actually, you would want to export it. Yeah. And so you can do a DF, uh, DWF, or you can save it as an image, however you want. So, like, if I save it as, say, I want to save it as an image. Um, so it's going to say where I save it, what windows I want, if I want well, select windows, mm -hmm. I can select the sheets that I want, and then also um, if I want to hide the crop box or if I want a certain scope. Also you can do what type of, uh, if I want a PNG or JPEG. Okay. Also generally when you save it as, as an image, always do lossless, this is the higher resolution, and then Zoom, I generally want to do 100% so that way whenever I open it up, it changes it to 100% so it's not scaled. And also image quality, 600. Highest, that's to get to the highest resolution so that way if you have to stretch it or anything, it doesn't lose its quality. All right, and if you minimize these, you're going to see there's all these windows back over here. Um, these are just all the windows that we opened up. So this was our sheet. Um, this is our sheet. So we have our 3D view. We have our floor plan. So these are all of them. If you were to um, minimize it, you can actually like, make it into our four boxes if you want it, kind of similar to Rhino, where we have our four boxes. Um, This is if you want like multiple boxes open at one time. Okay. Does anyone have any questions they want to they're confused about or want to know more about? No? Is there a command like Rhino? 
men? There are. Um, actually, if you go up to one of these tabs, they're just going to show you. So this one is W. If you see right there, walls, W, A. And those are going to be the commands. So they're not like control, control, whatever. Um, Keys. Yeah, they're going to be like just the little the initials that you put. So if I click on the wall, and I believe it's M M. Yeah, M M. Is so there I, a is there a way you could like type in a command rather than going back to the ribbon every time? Um, you generally end up memorizing them, and so that way it comes quicker because you only need two keys to click it uh, or to create that command. So like right now, I just clicked M M. And that was mirror, so I want to mirror it against this wall, and it's going to create that same wall with everything on this side. Mm -hmm. um, or if I wanted to do my wall, W A. Uh, don't save. See, it reminded me again. So W A. Look, I have a wall. If I want to get out of it, escape. I want another wall, etc. Well, I know what you mean by like search for different commands. No, that, that's uh, that, that's an engine that only works in Rhino, mm -hmm. and that, and that's when like that's when you get into the differentiations of programs and what you're comfortable with, and it's about memorizing them. If you wanna, if you're comfortable with memorizing at least simple things, you won't have to memorize too much because it's simple, mm -hmm. and everything's under tabs, yeah. so that's, you'll never get lost. Yeah, that's the kind of nice thing is because these tabs, it's like architecture, structure, system, like. It's kind of gives you already what you're looking for. It's pretty straightforward. Like architecture, that's going to be your uh, windows, walls, uh, floors, uh, stairs, etc. Structure, those are going to be your beams, trusses, um, and then columns, etc. Systems, that's going to be your HVAC systems, piping, um, plumbing, fixtures. And then insert, that's if you want to put another project in there or image or if you want to import another CAD file um, and then annotate, analyze, massing in site, so that's what we use to create our ground level. Um, collaborate, you generally don't really need this. And then we have our view, so that's like what we used on our two weeks ago was to render, so we created our like realistic views, and we also create our 3D sections. And then you can also do a little call out. So, call outs are actually kind of a cool thing. It's a different type of section. Um, call outs, so if you see the little video, or video, not video, picture up here, is through from a section, we can do a call out bubble right around a certain detail, and that's going to give us a view of that little corner or connection piece right there. It's a detail, basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a detail image. I, I like, I just want to go back to that. I think, I think with regards to Revit and Rhino, Rhino is strictly a 3D modeling software where anything you create is possible. So you can make a wall that's bent on its side and it's curved and it's, you know, twisted around itself. Like, that's what the modeling is there for. That's what that software is there for. This is for realistic things. You can get very creative with it, but there's always this sense of physics and reality with Revit. You'll never be able to make a wall that doesn't structurally work. So it's about finding what you want from the, pro from the program. Obviously, if you're gonna make something abstract, extremely abstract, go to Rhino. It's just a lot simpler than Revit in that sense of 3D modeling because the 3D modeling software for Revit is kind of clunky. But if you're trying to make something quick, like make a wall, make roofs, make windows, make these and that, that are simple, very, very quick things, then you have Revit where you can, we made an entire house with sheets, 2D drawings, with elevations, all that stuff in half an hour when making that kind of stuff wouldn't have to, like literally you would make the line, extrude it, make the insides and stuff like that. So it's about finding what you want from the program. Mm -hmm. You would never do what you do on Illustrator on Rhino, and you would never do what you do on AutoCAD in Photoshop. So it's about finding what you need from the project and 
Revit's a lot more technical. It's a lot more efficient. Uh, Rhino is extremely creative and a lot more fluid. But you lose things and you gain things. So, with regards to your question, please. Um, so if you just kind of saw what I just did, so I created a little section really quickly. I clicked on that section. Uh, it brings me to this window here. You can change the, how far the window goes out if you want. And then I used that little call out that I told you under view, view call out. And I created a call out right around this corner. Oops, excuse me. And then I clicked on the little bubble as soon as I can stop. Okay, I'm gonna go over here. If you double click on the, call, the bubble, it should just pop up to this one, and this is gonna be our detail. And then if this is not exactly what you want, again, you can go under components, and under load families, there is a section under here for um, like section detail. Where's my details? Detail items. And here it will give you under what types of materials you wanna use. So wood framing, and there's a wood wood section. And there's these are different types of sections that you would normally see in. So when you put these cut. in your section cut right here, is it going to alter the entire project or just nope. this little call out? Nope, just the call out. So if I, it's going to give me options here. It's not letting me do it right now. It's not being my friend. But when you do it, um, it'll just create like a little, it's basically a detail line. <laughs> it's texture, right? Mm hmm Like texture. And if you don't want, if for some reason, like what I was doing, I couldn't get it in there, mm -hmm. I can just create myself a detail line exactly like that. And there I have a section cut of a beam. Mm -hmm. And that comes down to like, some things are just easier to draw, just instead of messing with the entire project. If it's this you're going to be focusing on, sometimes you just draw it by hand, and it's just a lot simpler, quicker. Instead of making the actual family, making sure that the family is in the right level, you can just 2D draw it, just call it a day. You don't have to modify the entire project, unless you want to. All right. So. Any other questions before we go? No. We're good? All right. Well, thank you, guys. All right, thank you for coming. And the uh, advanced level course will be in two weeks. Two weeks, same place here, noon.